Hi, this is Tessa Keo, and this is another 20 with Tessa. Today I have 20 tips to get you started with Microsoft Excel for your OneName studies. These tips will work with any of the spreadsheet programs, but each program has a little bit different layout, so you're going to have to search if you use um, Google Spreadsheets or um, an open office program or something like that, you're going to have to take a look and see because they all have the same functions but sometimes they're in a little bit different places. Also this video is intended for those of us who are I would say beginners to slight intermediates with the uh, Microsoft Excel program. There are several guild members who've been using spreadsheet programs for years and have much more knowledge and hopefully we can get them to either make some additional videos for us or to meet up with us in a Google Plus Hangout and we'll record it and share those tips. So let's get started. The first thing I would say in dealing with Excel spreadsheets or any spreadsheets is that going into it you need to know a few things before you get started. I would not just open a spreadsheet program and throw data into it from any of the research sites. I would give it a little bit of thought and kind of draw it out even on paper at the beginning if you're not familiar with, with spreadsheets or kind of work it out in your head first. But these are the types of things I'd think about. The first is what's the purpose of the spreadsheet? Um, because if you don't have a point to putting all of this information in an Excel spreadsheet, you really shouldn't be using one. The second is determining what kind of information you want to include in your spreadsheet. And specifically, you're going to need to think about the headings, the layout, the columns and the rows, how you want the spreadsheet to look, how you want to be able to sort and filter the information, how you want to be able to um, review it and maybe um, find information in your spreadsheet. All of, all of these questions you ask yourself are going to determine how you set, it, set up your spreadsheet, how you set up the headings, the layout, the column and the rows, uh, the titles, and even how you input the data. So the first tip that I would give you is to expand your quick access toolbar. And if you've watched some of my previous videos, you've seen that I have mentioned the quick access toolbar and how you can customize it. And just really quickly, uh, if you go into the start button and you uh, click on Excel options and then finally the customize section, you will be able to add any of the popular or even the unknown commands that are in Excel. I'd encourage you to play around with it and to expand your toolbar. The second tip is about preferences and I would also, this is another instance of where you can go to the start button to Excel options and then take a look at the various preferences, whether that's um, how you title your documents, whether that's the font or the size of the font or the time between saving your Excel spreadsheets. All of those things can be dealt with in preferences and basically if you set it up there you have common standards every single time you open your Excel spreadsheets. The third tip I would give you is to set up your computer filing system and I'd give you two um, comments or reminders. Don't make your filing system too complex because you don't want to be drilling down through several subfolders, especially because both with the Windows system as well as the Mac system, and I don't know if that's considered Apple, um, each of them have great ser um, search functionality and you can easily find um, folders and files that you're looking for. So, so don't make it too difficult to find your files. And the second thing I would encourage you is to try and mimic your paper filing system because I think it's easier to remember one filing system and that filing system can work for your paper files, your computer files, and anything you have in the cloud. The fourth tip would be to learn some shortcut keystrokes. With data entry, it'll make your life much easier if you use your keyboard rather than going back and forth between the keyboard and the mouse. And there are a number of key of 
keys that are shortcuts that you can use with your data entry in a one name study or with genealogy in general that will just make things quicker and easier. So take a look at the um, section on Excel shortcuts that you can find in Excel Help. And the fifth, the fifth tip I would give is to learn some of the key tabs on the Excel ribbon. And the, the way the Excel ribbon is set up is with some uh, general tabs. And then when you go into each of the particular tabs, they have all of the items that relate to that tab that run along the ribbon. And there's not a lot that I think you need to learn for genealogy or for one name study. Um, so just learn the important ones and then as you become more comfortable branch out and play around with the additional or more in-depth Excel um, tabs. And those would be things like macros or advanced sorting and filtering. The th sixth tip I would give you is to learn and use the F1 key. Uh, the F1 key is your friend, it simply is help. And Excel has a great help section and Microsoft offers a number of Excel tutorials online to help you learn more about Excel. These can be found in the help section, so take advantage of it. Seventh is the F4 key, and this is simply a do again key. It's a simple but often overlooked key. And whether you're inserting rows, bolding something, italicizing, or using any other particular function, simply um, clicking on the F4 key does that action or function again and again until you move on from it. The eighth tip is to use the F5 key, and this is the go-to key. It's an easy way to find things in your worksheets, from comments to formulas, to my favorite, which is the blank cells and blank rows. This really makes short work of deleting blank sheet rows in your um, worksheets. Now, if you want to make a chart, it doesn't get any easier in Excel than selecting the data on your worksheet and clicking the F11 key. From there, you can make any changes, as simple as choosing the colors for your chart to changing the chart type or layout. So play around with the um, F11 key, and I've shown you that in my introduction to Excel. Um, it's kind of fun, and it's a really good visual way to get your data out for people to look at. My tenth tip would be to make use of the properties function. Properties are a great way of leaving breadcrumbs and keeping track of your workbooks. So take advantage of filling out the various sections in the properties key and you'll always be able to find your workbooks as well as your documents in any other of the Microsoft programs. The eleventh tip is to use a few more keys because they'll quickly get you where you want to go. So learn how to work around on your keyboard using keystrokes and these um, basic ones of Escape, Shift, Control, and Alt as well as the arrows will literally take you anywhere you want to go in your workbook. Twelfth tip, and you are probably tired of hearing about it if you've watched any of my um, data set videos, is that the first worksheet in any of my workbooks is the instructions. And this includes the date, the project, the tasks, the methodology, the status, and any additional notes. And basically what I'm doing is keeping track of what I'm doing, what the purpose of the workbook is, um, why I'm doing it, how I'm doing it, where I'm at in the project, what's left to do, and any issues, comments, or questions that I've picked up along the way. This is a great sheet to have in each of your workbooks, not only for you, but also for anyone else who's using your workbook in the future. My thirteenth tip is if you are at all visual, um, colors will really help you differentiate among your worksheets or items in your worksheet. So take advantage of using color in your workbooks. And also be sure to label the first row and every column um, in your worksheets. Set your titles for your workbooks so that you can always find them. And really make use of color to quickly find your way around in your workbook. My fourteenth tip would be about your cells. Get comfortable filling them in. Realize that a cell is simply a bucket for whatever data you are 
putting in that particular place. So learn how to negotiate around in cells. Learn how to enter the data correctly the first time and how to move around that data from cell to cell. And here is another great example of how you can use Microsoft tutorials and just play around. You can enter text, dates, formulas in any of the cells and you really do need to understand the difference between text, general dates and formulas and know how they work with your one name study. The fifteenth tip would be to learn the difference between paste and paste special because this relates to the format of where you took the information from and where the information is going to show up in your um, workbook. And it'll make your life easier if you learn how to do it right the first time. My sixteenth tip is to always make the time to source your work. Include the citation and the date of your research. You do this for your research logs and your genealogy database program. You need to remember to do it in your Excel workbooks because trust me, you will never get back to that instruction sheet and come up with the date that you did the research um, and work your way through if you don't keep track of the source citations at the outset. My 17th tip would be to learn how dates work in Excel. The method of entry really matters and that's because Excel is a flat um, database program and it is set up with formulas and it is set up to be uh, working with math and accounting functions and um, just a number of formulas and in fact the, f the formula when you enter a date is set up as a number and Excel does not recognize dates prior to 1900 so if, if you weren't aware of that and you use the date format for your dates you can easily screw up any of your uh, data entry and if you don't come up with a method of dates for your data entry and use it each and every time you're really going to be unhappy when you see those dates moving around and realize that you don't have a clean copy of your date information and as we all know the dates are very important in any genealogy or one name studies the 18th tip I would give you is to use hyperlinks and I would first say don't overuse them because they will add a lag time to your workbook. However, they are an underutilized source of going from one document to another or of going from a row of information in your workbook to the actual data record set, whether that's in Family Search, Ancestry.com, or any other website. And in this instance, I'm showing you the link to the um, Irish censuses and this will take me directly if I click on the link each row of this information will take me directly to the census information so be sure to when it's appropriate take advantage of hyperlinks. My 19th tip would be um, to use the form tab just for a new view. I don't know if you're aware that there's a form tab in Excel. I was not aware, um, but by using the form tab to review your worksheets, you have a whole new view for advanced searches um, and you can enter data not in the spreadsheet format, but in a database format. So put the function on your quick access toolbar. You can do that if you customize it and give it a go and see if you enjoy using the form view. And my 20th tip is to use the Alt key. And this is just another way to make working on your keyboard easier when you're doing data entry. So by clicking on the Alt key when you have your Excel workbook open, many of the functions are a keystroke away and they show up as you can see here in numbers from your quick access toolbar and in letters on your ribbon. And so in this instance um, I could just click F and it would open the start button. I could click one and it would save the document I'm working in. So this is a really great way of working around quickly and not you know moving your hand to the mouse and and really slowing down your work effort. 20 tips and in the next video we're going to go live and play around with a few of these tips in an Excel workbook.
In addition, if you have any tips for using Excel with your genealogy or a one-name study, I'd appreciate it if you'd share them with the rest of us. So, what are your tips? You can leave me a comment here at YouTube. You can email me at tessa.keo at one-name.org. You could post publicly or privately on Google+. You could visit the Guild on Facebook or at Google+. And finally, you can post at the Guild guild bulletin board in the Excel topic. So I'd be really interested in learning more about formulas and macros, and I know that there are a number of Excel experts out there who can help us. So thanks for watching, and all the best with your studies.